Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you in this channel. Uh, so we continue with the uh, with my learnings on the Dhammapada verses. Uh, today in this video I am going to share from 201 verse onwards, 201 to 220. There is a full playlist that is available on Dhammapada. You can go and uh, you can go on the playlists section and there is a Dhammapada playlist that is available and you can check all the videos on Dhammapada that I have made like I have covered like 20 verses in one video so that way I have covered so you can check right so let us start uh, verse number one two zero one Buddha says and this is the book that I am referring for my reading of the verses the Dhammapad this is by Eknath Ishwaran very very good book you can buy this book it is available on Amazon and other places online so you can check out this book this is a very good book right okay uh, verse 201 uh, Buddha says Conquest breeds hatred, for the conquered live in sorrow. Let us be neither the conqueror, neither the conqueror nor the conquered, and live in peace and joy. So Buddha is here saying that let us live in peace, in joy. For for Buddha's teaching is is that is on our peace, on our, not on the outer things. So as Buddha has shared in the other verses also that better than a man who conquers. Uh, many kingdoms and in that entire world is the person who conquers himself. So here also Buddha is saying that conquest breeds hatred. Conquest, conquering, that intention of conquering someone, power, the need of power, all these things breed hatred. And the because the conquered, the person who gets conquered lives in sorrow. So let us neither be the conqueror nor the conquered. Live in peace and joy. That should be our motto. Verse 202, Buddha says, There is no fire like lust, no sickness like hatred, no sorrow like separate, separateness, no joy like peace. Verse 203, No disease is worse than greed, no suffering worse than selfish passion. Know this and seek nirvana as the highest joy. Right? So Buddha is comparing various uh, um, uh, negative tendencies of the mind like lust. Buddha is comparing it to a to a fire no fire then like lust no sickness like hatred right so buddha is saying is that know all of this and seek nirvana once you know that all of this all of our negative all of our defilements that are there they will cause us sorrow so what we have to seek now is nirvana we need to walk the noble eightfold path and seek nirvana as our ultimate goal we have to keep that ultimate goal on on the front and move take one step towards it take one step every day towards it right okay verse number 204 205 health is the best gift contentment the best wealth trust the best kinsman nirvan the great the greatest joy drink the nectar of the dharma in the depths of meditation and become free from fear and sin so again buddha is encouraging us that that we need to devote ourselves to the dharma because that will give us peace devote us to dharma in the depths of meditation so that we can be free from these negative qualities verse 206 buddha says it is good to meet the wise even better to live with them but avoid the company of immature if you want joy so that is always buddha has said the company matters the people who we associate with we become that we ca somehow we catch the tendencies of that person because of some vibration we catch their vibration or something so buddha always says that try to associate be in the company of wise and noble people even uh, in 207 208 buddha is saying on the importance of company right buddha says keeping company with the immature is like is like going on a long journey with an enemy right so it is like uh, understood obvious that if you are going on a long journey with the enemy you will suffer so keeping a company with the immature is buddha is comparing it to to that the company of the wise is joyful like a reunion with one's family how much joy and peace that we get if we re get reunited uh, with our family so similarly is the company of the wise and company of the wise is the company of sangha Right? Being in company of, of spiritual people, people who have the similar interests, who are on the path of the dharma, who are senior, more experienced people. Right? 
verse just revealed therefore live amongst the wise who are understanding patient responsible and noble keep their company as the moon moves amongst the stars so as the moon that is like we move amongst the stars those noble people just try to keep the company of those those people they will keep us on the path so this is very very important right next we come to verse 209 which is this section starts with a pleasure buddha is talking about pleasure and you know lot of things verse 209 buddha says don't run after pleasure and neglect the practice of meditation if you forget the goal of life and get caught in the pleasures of the world you will come to envy those who put meditation first do again so buddha is a teacher buddha a teacher will always keep pushing the student keep telling that student that what is more most important for you so again buddha says because see the world is maya world keeps entangled us in lot of things family relationships wo the money and you know desire and lot of things so buddha is says keep keep do not forget the goal of life do not get caught in the pleasures of the world and if you do that maybe when you are on your deathbed you will regret those people who had put meditation first and who had achieved nirvana as compared to you who got lost in the pleasures and friends it has happened to me also see it has happened to everyone who are there on the spiritual path there are times when you you know get sidetracked you know so uh, it has happened to me also i i you know stopped practicing mindfulness did, did not not practice but you know i was sharing a lot about mindfulness but then i got sidetracked and then i came again and then i realized that you know this is my dharma this is my one thing that i need to do so through this youtube channel what i'm doing so all this is there it happens so but we have have to just keep making keep the goal in on, on, on uh, ahead of us so that we keep reminding ourselves but because there are a lot of distractions around us right so verse 210 buddha says not see, seeing what is pleasant brings pain seeing what is unpleasant being brings pain therefore go beyond both pleasure and pain right not seeing what is pleasant brings pain seeing what is so what basically what my understanding is that when we engage in the worldly pleasures we don't see the pain that is there that, that to follow right and when we do meditation we we, we see the spiritual practice as unpleasant but there is a lot of pleasantness in that so buddha is saying go beyond pleasure and pain right ultimately we have to leave all the you know all these concepts all these labels pleasure pain and move beyond it just be still right okay verse 211 buddha says don't get selfishly attached to anything for trying to hold on to it will become will bring you pain when you have neither likes or dislikes you will be free this is very very critical this verse all like go back to the noble truth number 2 the cause of suffering buddha says it is ignorance it is our attachment we think the things are permanent which they are not and because of that attachment arises in us and that attachment gives us suffering simple logic so buddha says buddha is again saying don't try to hold on to things don't try to get selfishly not even family members and everything give them love just keep focus on giving not the expectations that is the problem right being in the world is not a problem but attaching ourselves trying to find our happiness through those objects which are changing that is the problem so move beyond all the likes and the dislikes and the cravings and be free verse 212 buddha says selfish attachment brings suffering selfish attachment brings fear be detached and you will be free of suffering and fear right so buddha says attachment brings suffering brings fear be detached and you will be free of suffering and fear right so somewhere we have to take that decision it doesn't like need a lot of like meditation and lot of uh, practices and you know some you should be very very experienced on the spiritual path no right now wherever you are you can decide you can realize that your attachments have caused you fear anger pain it's time to drop those attachments and live freely in this world right okay verse 213 buddha says selfish bonds cause grief selfish bonds cause fear be unselfish and you will be free from grief and fear so buddha is giving here a solution that instead of being selfish be selfless 
Buddha is saying be unselfish. That means do not find, do not find, you know, uh, try for a finding a pleasure behind any action that you do. Just do the action. Do not, uh, you know, expect things and expect that particular action to give you some pleasure. Right? Just be selfless. In Hindi, we have a, a kahavat which is neki kar darya mein dal. That means do some good work and then put it in the river. Right? So that is how we have to be. Right? Verse 214. Selfish enjoyments lead to frustration. Selfish enjoyments lead to fear. Be unselfish and you will be free from frustration and fear. So let us start reflecting in our life what actions I do with selfishness, with attachment and what actions I do with just doing my duty and just doing without any expectation of the reward. All even Bhagavad Gita you see the same thing is said that just do your work without any expectation of the fruit. That causes the pain. Then again, Buddha is trying to compare with various things like verse 215, Buddha says, Selfish desires give rise to anxiety. Selfish desires give rise to fear. Be unselfish and you will be free from anxiety and fear. Verse 216, Buddha says, Cravings bring pain. Cravings bring fear. Don't yield to cravings and you will be free from the pain and fear. So make a list of like top 10 cravings. Food cravings, sexual cravings, sleep cravings. What other cravings? Cravings about achieving something in life, some money goal that you have. So think about what are the things that are cravings. Those things are the fetters. These are the chains that are binding us. Will keep us in the circle of birth and death. So let go of all the cravings. Let go of all the goals and the ambitions that you have. You have. Just do your duty in this present moment. Thich Nhat Han Bhujismok says very good thing on aimlessness. I think it's there in the book. Peace is every step. Right? Aimlessness. Just be aimless. Don't attach yourself to a specific goal and, you know, uh, find your worth or the pleasure in that goal. No, we don't have to do that. Just whatever comes in this present moment, we do and then we rest. Right? Verse 217, those who have character and discrimination, who are honest and good and follow the dharma with devotion, win the respect of all of the world. Right? Who have character and discrimination, who are honest and good and follow the dharma, with devotion, right? So that is 217. 218. If you long to know what is hard to know and can resist the temptations of the world, you will cross the river of life. This is so beautiful. That means, see, spiritual knowledge, even Buddha's teachings, the sutras, they, all the dharma, study of the dharma, it doesn't come easy, right? We have to devote effort. So Buddha says, if you long to know what is hard to know and can resist the temptations of this world, so all the world is creating temptations around us. So if we can resist the temptations, then you will cross the river of life. Verse 219.222, it is very good. It is like Buddha is showing to a person who wants to know what is the benefit that I get by following all the, you know, the path that Buddha has given. Buddha says, to reassure that person, as your family and friends receive you with joy when you return from a long journey, so will your good deeds receive you when you go from this life to the next. When where they will be waiting for you with joy like your kinsmen. So again, come back to Buddha's five remembrances, where the fifth remembrance, I've made a separate video on that, you can check that, where Buddha says, my actions are my true friends. My, I cannot escape the consequences of my actions. So friends, whatever actions, deeds that we do, the karma we do, that karma will, will go with us after this life. So very, very important that we do the good deeds, right? And Buddha is comparing it to like of how our family and friends receive you. Our good deeds that we do on the path of the dharma that we walk will receive us. We will be able to create conditions for us to continue on our mission of dharma in a much better way, more conducive conditions in the next lifetime when we practice the dharma or we can liberate in this life itself, right? So there is no such thing that we cannot, right? So just Buddha is giving us that encouragement to follow the path of the dharma, right? So this is two, up to 220 I have done. So I hope uh, some of it may be useful and you might have got some perspectives. Do share your thoughts, comments, feedback in the 
uh, uh, in the in the comment section below. And uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.